Declination or magnetic variation is the angle between true north and magnetic north. Okay, so this is that image again. And let's say that you are standing right here somewhere around Maine and you're using a compass and you need to know where north is. Well, north is right here. That's the North Pole. By definition, that is north or a zero degree bearing. However, your compass is under the influence of Earth's magnetic field. So your compass is actually going to point to magnetic north. And you would see that there's an angle between the two. That angle is called declination, and you've got to account for that because although a compass is really precise and people's lives have been dependent on a compass, if you don't account for the declination, it can be a question of life and death because if you're a couple of degrees off and you're walking uh, for a few hours, you might get lost. Okay, I want you to imagine the styrofoam ball as the Earth. And again, on Earth, you have the true north and you have the magnetic north, which I will denote as the blue tack and red tack respectively. So if you're standing right here, true north is in this direction, but your compass is going to point in that direction and that's declination. Sometimes the declination is larger and other times the declination is not at all. Because if you're standing right here, then true north is right up there. Your compass is going to point toward magnetic north. But in order to get to magnetic north, it must pass through true north. So in this case, there's actually no declination. But if you're just a little off to the side, now you can see the declination and you have to account for it. And it can be a little declination or a big declination depending on where you are on Earth. So this brings up the isogonic lines chart. So let's define some root words. Uh, gon means angle, like a polygon, for example, octagon, heptagon, and so on. Iso means the same. And a or an is a prefix meaning not or without. So isogonic line. Okay, so iso means same. Gonic refers to angle. So each of these lines that you see are isogonic lines on which the angle or declination is the same, isogonic, the same angle. So in other words, if you're standing anywhere on this line where it says 10 degrees west, the declination is the same by 10 degrees. And we'll talk more about that later. If you're standing right here in Northern California, then the declination is 15 degrees and it's the same declination all the way on this line. Now, the agonic line is a special type of isogonic line on which there is no declination whatsoever. The declination is zero degrees. Now, real quick, why does it say east over here and west over there when this is the west coast and that's the east coast? It just means that these isogonic lines are pointed in the easterly direction and these isogonic lines are pointed in the westerly declination right here. So once you know the declination, you either have to add or subtract from the bearing that you're given. So let's say that your commander tells you to find a bearing of 225 degrees. Well, if you're standing over here in northwestern uh, Washington, the declination is 20 degrees east. So that means you either have to add or subtract 20 degrees from the bearing that you are given. Now, how do you know when to add and when to subtract? When I teach this, I tell my boys at Rangers to think of a number line. Okay, and I lined up zero degrees with zero right here on the number line. Now, on a number line, you know you have the positive numbers on the right and the negative numbers to the left. So I want you to visualize a big minus sign on the left and a big plus sign on the right. So this should remind you that if you are west of the agonic line, which is this that I'm outlining here, you must subtract the declination. If you are east of the agonic line, you must add the declination. So let's say that you're standing right here in Pennsylvania with a 10 degree west declination and your commander tells you to find a bearing of 270 degrees. Well, 
If you have a 10 degrees west declination, you must add 10 degrees to it. So instead of 270 degrees, you add 10, which is 280 degrees. And that's to account for uh, the angle between true north and magnetic north. And if you do so, you would be heading toward true north now instead of magnetic north. So let's do a practice real quick. Let's say that you're east of the agonic line where there's a seven degree declination. What would you set your compass to if I told you to find a bearing of 263 degrees? Okay, so it says that you're east of the agonic line. The agonic line is right here where there's no declination. So you don't have to worry about adding or subtracting here. But you're east of the agonic line, which means that you're on this side. If you're on this side, think about the number line. Think about the positive numbers being on this side of zero, so you add. So if you're told to find a bearing of 263 degrees, you add the declination, which is seven degrees. 263 plus 7 is 270, so you must set your compass to a bearing of 270 degrees. What cardinal direction has a bearing of 270 degrees? West. But let's say that you're standing right here in the middle of Texas. What is the declination there? It's not 5 degrees and it's not 10 degrees, but it's somewhere between 5 and 10 degrees. To be accurate, and you need to be accurate, I would advise you to go to this website right here. I'll leave a link in the description below, and you could put in your longitude and latitude, and it will tell you what your current declination is. Now notice I say current declination. In fact, the magnetic north pole moves, unfortunately. So in 1850, the magnetic north was right here, and in 2010, it was up here. So that means if you're using a map, you have to really pay attention to what year that map was printed. If it was like a map from the 70s, 80s, 90s, it's really not going to help you when you're using a compass because the declination is off.